Hello, farm members, and welcome to another edition of Locked In with Kim. I switched rooms to keep it interesting. There's only so many places you can go when you're stuck in the four walls of your house. Um, but if any of you are like me, I'm using this time to cook fabulous meals and bake with my children. When we get back to normal time and a random Tuesday doesn't equal cookie making day, I know that there's going to be some tears. But I know that not everyone is as fortunate as we are to be able to do that, that there are people in this community who are hurting. Um, and I'm very pleased to be joined today by Elizabeth. Gilkey of the Fredericksburg Food Bank. So Elizabeth, thank you so much for being with us today. How is your family faring during this lockdown? We're all doing great. Good to hear. Excellent. I'm glad it's spring and not winter when we're going through this. So true and not 100 degrees too and people <laughs> you can't even enjoy the outside a little bit. So um, I wanted to chat about what what are the impacts you're seeing at the food bank? Okay, well, the first thing I want to just clarify, and many of you may know this already, the difference between a food bank and a food pantry. So a food bank, there's 200 Feeding America food banks in um, the United States, and including Puerto Rico, and eight in Virginia. And what we do is act as a food hub or a clearinghouse to distribute food in, to our community partners uh, pantries and programs. So all throughout Caroline, Spotsylvania, King George, Fredericksburg, Stafford, and the community of Locust Grove, we have about 254 community partners that are running about 150 programs. These include faith-based pantries, um, school pantries, things like that, and they distribute. That way someone who needs help way out in Caroline can get help in Caroline. They don't have to drive all the way to our warehouse. Well, what has happened is because of the shutdowns, of course, all of our school pantries are closed down. Um, <clears throat> and many of our other community partners have shut down due to safety concerns. Um, so now we still have not just the base need that we normally have, which is about 31,500 people in our area. We now have, in some cases, up to 60% greater need because people are out of work, children are out of school, and they don't know where their next meal is coming from. And they're having to make tough choices between paying their bills or paying their mortgage and buying food. So that's where we come in. And so a way that we have... Um, try to handle this is that on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're distributing directly from the food bank, pre-packed boxes, and we're doing low contact distribution where people line up in their cars. Um, last time, the food bank is down sort of a long, windy road um, through like an industrial park. Um, last time we distributed the food line was out of our parking lot, down all that long, windy road, and about a quarter mile out onto the main road. So need is great, and people are, you know, willing to drive to get it. So what we need right now are, are really um, three things. The first thing is that we need food just flat out. Um, I don't know if you saw on the Today Show, they did a whole thing about Feeding America and about how we're trying to bid on food, but sometimes we're being outbid by grocery stores um, from, from food vendors. Now, normally we have a lot of rescued food from our um, retail partners, like for example, Wegmans, Walmart, Giant Food, things like that. We have a lot of rescued food. Well, now there's just not uh, any food to donate. It's not on the shelves, so there's none coming right. in. Right. Either, okay. Exactly. So we need three things. We need food, bodies, and funds. Um, now, the easiest thing, because we're not supposed to be going to the grocery store right now, is to donate to our online food drive. And an advantage to that is, is that for example, if you wanted to donate a pallet of, you know, physically donate a pallet of peanut butter, um, what that would cost you is very different than what it would cost the food bank because we wouldn't just buy one pallet of peanut butter, we would probably buy 400 pallets of peanut butter. And so we would get a better price. So that's where the funds come in. Now, if you have food you'd like to donate and you are worried about um, being in a situation, you know, if you're going through your pantry or whatever, and 
it, you're worried about being in a situation where you can donate, we have a drop box. Um, you can come after five and we're not open Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So that would work as well. But the final thing that we need desperately is volunteers, healthy volunteers who are willing to come and help us distribute on these Tuesdays and Thursdays. Last time, we're supposed to distribute only from 11 to three. We ended up distributing until five o'clock and still had to turn 41 cars away um, because otherwise we would have been there all night. So the more people we have doing that, the better. So are there's there any limitations um, on who can help volunteer? Because a lot of people have their children home with them right now. Right. Um, 14 is, is the youngest. Um, but again, you know, there's still things that a, a child younger than 14 can do. And what I would encourage is that you contact Jess, who is, um, or basically the best thing to do is go into our website, which is www.fredfood.org. And there you will see how to donate funds how to participate in the virtual food drive, it pops right up. And if you go to where it says get involved, you can register as a volunteer and let them know the ages of your ch children. And someone will contact you to talk about things that your child can do. That's such a great outlet right now for unique things to do for the kids, giving back to the community and, and to help out the food bank. So we actually currently have a far virtual food drive going on. So again, that site is fredfood.org. The first thing that pops up says virtual food drive. You click that, the far one is all the way to the right. And you can, when you pull up that site, you can look at and buy individual things of food. You can pick what you wanna buy and contribute. And um, we have a long history of a partnership with the food bank. Um, you know, we continue to do our cereal drive every October, right. which we will definitely do again. Um, but I know a lot of people want to know how they can help right now. And really, what you said, foods, funds, um, and volunteers. That's a, a great thing for us to focus on. And what if you, you need help or you know someone in your community for, you need, that you need help, that needs help? Where do they go? Well, there's a couple things they can do. The first thing is, again, you can direct them to the website. But the other thing is we now have an app called Fred Food VA, and that can be downloaded to any uh, smartphone for free. And what they can do is it gives real-time information on food assistance available near them. And it even triangulates with their phone uh, map um, app to give them directions. So that way they don't have to worry about going to a pantry that they've heard about that is closed or has changed their hours. It gives up-to-date news on pantries near them that are distributing. Well, Elizabeth, you all do amazing work. We are so pleased to partner with you. Again, fredfood.org. Go check out the FAR virtual food drive, and we hope that you all stay safe, uh, stay sane during this time, and, and we hope that we can get you some assistance into the, to the food bank. So, Elizabeth, thank you, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. We appreciate your continued partnership. You guys have been instrumental in feeding the hungry and your leaders in our community. We appreciate it. Well, thank you for that. We'll see you soon. Thank you.